Hi guys, Dustin here with another Star Trek, the official Starships collection review video. This is the 26th issue. Wow, I can't believe it. 26. And we are taking a look at the Tholian Starship. Only has one crew member launched in, 20, in the 22nd century, length of 15 centimeters. 15 meters, why did I say centimeters? And its weapon is a Tholian web. Here's our specifications. Operated by the Tholian Assembly, active in 22nd century. Length of 15 meters, y'all witnessed it. I said meters, not centimeters. One crew member. And the weaponry is particle beam emitters, energy dampening bolts, and Tholian web. You'll find out about the web. <clears throat> All right. This ship came from the 22nd century. Tholian vessels were extremely powerful for their size, tactically superior to many other ships of the era. The 22nd century is actually the next century, which is 21101. Because that's actually the beginning of the 21st cen 22nd century. We are in the 21st century. That's basically 2001 to 2100. These ships are fast, sleek, and highly maneuverable. Piloted by a single occupant, these ships were often employed in small squadrons. Working together in a coordinated attack, they can utilize their powerful weapons to overwhelm much larger vessels and larger targets. The Enterprise, the NX-01, encountered with a Tholian vessel in 2152, marked in Earth's first Earth ship's first recorded contact with the species. Tholians inhabited a region of space near the Klingon border. They were extremely hostile to other races. No more was known about them, except for the fact that they were territorial and were known for their punctuality. These small dart shaped vessels cable interstellar travel at warp speeds. Its overall aerodynamic shape also suggests it was capable of atmospheric flight. In the interior of the ship is normally set to about 408 Kelvin or 207 degrees Celsius. So, for this, we're going to take out my cell phone. A cell phone ha my cell phone has a converter. We're going to take a look. Maybe I should turn that down. Okay, so, we're going to go to the calculator. Converter, temperature. All right, so 207 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. You're basically taking a look at 404.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, indeed. That is super hot. No one would withstand that kind of temperature. Despite the size, they possess considerable firepower, including particle beam weaponry and energy dampening weapons. Their offensive capabilities were certainly more than a match for many ships of the 22nd century. A few direct hits from these weapons would be enough to disable the engines and armaments of craft intruding their own space. Tholian ships often operate in groups of two or more that can overwhelm much larger ships. 2152, four Tholian ships working together were able to disable the Talker, a Vulcan combat cruiser, as well as destroy a small fleet of Solibmian ships. This incident occurred when Tholians were attempting to retrieve a 31st century Earth time travel pod has been salvaged by the Enterprise NX-01. 
vessel scored several direct hits on the Enterprise with their energy dampening weapons, causing it to lose all power by scrambling every power relay on board the ship. They were able to steal a time travel pod, only for it to return to its proper timeline moments later. Here's photos, the top one right here. The Enterprise NX-01 became the first Earth ship to encounter the Thelians when it was surrounded by several of their ships. The tractor beam from the Tholian ship had a yellow-greenish hue, powerful enough to stop the Enterprise NX-01 from escaping. Ouch. Imagine getting grabbed by that. In the Mirror Universe, Tholian were able to trap a vessel inside a force field. This is actually created by joining energy filaments between work between their ships form an elaborate web. If you ever play Star Trek Online, you would actually know about this. Pine Brothers. <laughs> Tholian ships were equipped with energy dampening weapons. These blue bolts of energy drain all power from the weapons, engines, and weapon systems. These ships are generally huge. Levels of energy emitted intense yellow light from their warp engines. Something I've never seen is yellow light for warp engines. Unlike most ships, Unlike most advanced species, the Tholians are not humanoids. They were not humanoids. Six legs, two arms, and their whole body appeared to shimmer with intense heat. They were hermaphroditic. Their speech was punctuated by a series of hisses and whistles. Hard, crystalline exoskeleton would act as a natural transmitter and send a distress signal. This exoskeleton would also begin to fracture if a Tholian was subject to a temperature below 30, 308 Kelvin or 107 degrees Celsius. So, so we're going to translate that converter. Alright, 107 degrees Celsius. That's basically going to be 224 degrees, 0.6 Fahrenheit, not rounded. So here is your plan views. The in 2155, the Mirror Universe Tholians open a spatial interface with another universe by detonating a tri cobalt warhead inside the gravity well of a dead star. They knew it would be too dangerous to send a ship through its riffin fabric of space, so they transmitted a distress call into the opening, hoping to lure a ship from the other side. The USS Defiant, NCC-1764, from 2268 responded and became trapped in the rift until eventually phase into the mirror universe. The aliens even told the Defiant to one of their dry docks where they began harvesting its technologies. The crew of the ISS Enterprise learned of this advanced ship from the future and a way to manage to steal it. But before the Enterprise was trapped inside, the Tholian web and destroyed it along with most of its crew. So, here's the ship. You actually have the engineering section right here with these little lights back here. Main power matrix. For these, habitat module. And these are your warp engine outlets. And this is the front of the ship. Don't get it confused with the back. There's a difference. Actually, have the habitat module right here, particle beam emitter right here, web filament, and the tractor beam are right at the nose, but different areas. Here's one of the ISS Enterprise Mirror Universe became trapped after. Seven Thonian ships spun a powerful energy web around it in a matter of seconds. They're fast. Unbelievably.
the intricately woven filaments that made up Thole Web has similar energy structure that found in their tractor beams. So that's your engine support, your impulse engine generates right here, and also your outlet engine right here. In 2268, Commander Spock ran an analysis of the filaments used to create the Tholian web, concluded that it was an energy field, but there was nothing similar to a structure in Federation technology. So it's very unique. No, no one have ever seen it. Sole survivor. The relations between the Tholians and Federation would continue to be fraught well into the 24th century. 2353, the Tholians destroyed a Federation star base. The only survivor was Commander Riker's father, Kyle Riker. The web differences, the web created by the mirror universe came from a beam emitted in those front of their vessels complete in a matter of seconds. The web in the regular universe took several hours to spin and came from the rear of the Tholian vessels. Designing this ship. The return of the Tholians gave the concept artist John Eves the perfect opportunity to retro out one of Matt Jeffrey's original classic starships. All the joys for fans of setting Star Trek Enterprise in the 22nd century was that it offered up the prospects revisiting some iconic aliens not seen from the 1996 to 1969, nearly 35 years earlier. Right now, in this case, it'll be nearly 49 years. As a matter of fact, tremendous anticipation how the original series aliens, their ships would interpret it with modern visual effects technology. Production illustrator John Eves was certainly thrilled about the chance to imagine designs that inspired the choice of profession. So these are your right design directions for the 22nd century Tholian vessels straight away two alternatives please the design on this page use of negative space the rear butt on the left for choice that's your preferred choice I kind of dig the negative space and this is the studio version Tholian starship appeared in the original series. Clean lines construct almost entirely from wood. Actually, the the model was later fitted with the cells and appearance as the Aurora in the episode "The Way to Eden." I kind of dig that. The Tholian model appeared on the screen again as the Aurora disguise parts taken away from commercially available model kits. That's basically your kit bash version of the Aurora. Use of multicolored lights or filming helped give the original series Tholian ships a strange iridescent glow. In the 22nd century starship, Tholian starships fed from modern visual effects but mostly, obviously still related to the design of Matt Jeffrey's original idea. This is a remastered version of the, Tho of the Tholian web broadcasted in 2007 featured an updated look in Tholian starships. Retain the essential design elements in the original, but extra detail is also added in as well. Reimagining the Tholians. No grand plans to feature the Tholians Star Trek Enterprise despite their popularity with fans after their one and only appearance in the original series episode, The Tholian Web. The producers were particularly keen that the Tholian Web should not be revealed as a humanoid species in mask, but something for far more exotic, like something that we've never seen before. I've never seen a Tholian before, but one 
I always had had things about Tholians. I've been wondering what they look like. I played Star Trek Online and I couldn't imagine it. Producer Mike Sussman was delighted with Tholian ships and they got to blow one up. Ain't that cool? Executive producer Manny Cotto, pitcher on set, was very keen to make a Mirror Universe episode. That would be a huge honor. The head was actually the only scene on a Tholian in the original series. The way the view screen image appeared to shimmer with heat led to relevation and enterprise that they lived in incredibly hot environments. So, if you actually seen this episode, the Tholian Web, if you went back and watched Star Trek Enterprise, this would actually give you a clue of who they are. Mike Sussman, pictured right here, began work on the franchise in 1995. That's basically Voyager's time. And later became part of the writing staff on Voyager and later moved to Enterprise. He has writing credits on more than 30 episodes. Alright, let's continue on the next page. The producers were delighted that they were able to feature fully in the weapons in Enterprise. And they actually met a brutal end when temperature inside cells lowered, causing it to shatter apart, basically like glass. Mike Sussman always wondered about the fate of the Defiant after it was blown into interface. Actually, question the ultimately led reintroduction of the Tholians on Enterprise. The Defiant was actually a CG model for its appearance on Enterprise. In fact, the only feature in the Mirror Universe meant it freed writers' continuity concerns. The mirror in the in a Mirror Darkly was a two-part episode. Just by the cost building sets on board the Defiant, the need for filming, the bridge was recurring for pans, pans, painstake detail. That means everything from the original series. So, the first TV appearance was Future Tense, and the last appearance was In a Mirror Darkly. But part one is also labeled on here for key appearance. So basically it was a two part episode. I've seen it. I've seen both episodes. It felt amazing. In a mirror darkly is actually it's actually an alternative to what would happen if we were to shoot the Vulcans, take control of their ship, and using their technology to venture out in space and create a brutal empire by conquering many races. The episode, Future Tense, marked its first appearance of a Tholian ship since the debut in the original series, The Tholian Web, aired nearly 35 years. So, the next issue we're going to take a look is the 22nd century Romulan Bird of Prey. This is the first ever Romulan ship we ever had for nearly over a year now because I didn't get the Dideridex battle cruiser since November of last year so here's our back image so let's take a look at the ship herself actually I actually like this ship it's actually one of my favorites I actually like the they gave the two translucent colors of blue and, gr and yellow actually much well detailed it's much more of a good thing that it does look like a dart but please don't throw this if you think it's a dart then what is wrong with you and this is your habitable zones right here in blue a larger blue your impulse engines are these guys right here I actually like the way they actually introduced the translucent blue and the yellow at the same time. I don't think I ever had a ship that had translucent blue. Well, actually, translucent yellow. Why was I thinking blue? I'm sorry. 
may, see, it may look like a top, but it's not. You actually have a lot of details on this. That is just amazing, like out of this world amazing. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this. It looks like it's just misaligned right here. It looks a little bit aligned right here. This one is just 100% aligned. A lot of details and textures all around. It's just amazing, actually. Like this ship, it looks pretty cool. And I actually put it up on a display stand. Uh, first couple of times, I had a hard time putting it on there because. It may take a couple of tries. But once you get it on there, don't mess with it. Yeah, this may take a while. I think I, I think I got it on this time, so we're all good. Yeah, it does actually have that dark, dark look to it from this tip all the way to the back. Really stands out for its design. Tholians are not, to be honest, Tholians are not one of my favorite alien races. They are a pain in the butt to defeat in Star Trek Online. Once they bring out the webs, you gotta shoot them fast. If you actually have fire at will, that actually helps you a lot better. Take them out much faster. So, uh, oh wow, I like this ship. It looks pretty cool. No flaws except that this part's a little bit misaligned. Try matching up in the lines, but I, I gave, I'll give them a B for their effort. But overall, A on replication, it looks pretty nice. That's all I have to say. If you like this video, subscribe. If you like this video, like it. Subscribe to my channel for more. Um, I'm going to be doing a special once I hit 200. And I don't know what I'm going to do for 150 subscribers. So I'm pretty close. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Alright, my name is Dustin and I will see you later.